Hello guys, my name is Serge and this is Rene from Artistic Sports Physio here at The Active and we thought we'll introduce you um, to us first and then we can cover the topics um, in the video and you can ask us some questions and if you have any ideas for future topics you can also comment down below and we really want to just help you guys to understand how you move or what you do in the gym and implement some of the things in your own training that might benefit you so we had a topic in mind today and it is uh, top three exercises that everyone should be doing regardless of where they're at with their fitness journey or movement practice i'll hand it over to to renee and we can um, talk about the three exercises and we'll demonstrate it to you after this so my top three my first one is a roll-up exercise. So a roll-up I usually give either as a spinal mobility exercise to really articulate each vertebrae of the spine or an abdominal exercise where you can't cheat by using your hip flexors. So it's a real true um, idea of how your abdominal strength is really going. So you could do 100 sit-ups in the gym with the knees bent or using something to lever off to do your sit-ups, but uh, the roll-up is a true test of abdominal strength. The next one is thoracic rotation. So I find a lot of injuries, no matter where they are in the body, we start to lose a rotational component of our movement. So I quite frequently will test thoracic rotation when someone comes in for back, shoulder, lower limb pain, anything like that. So thoracic rotation, I'll get their arms up and this is to help to get more movement into the mid thoracic spine. So I'll assess it with the arms up and I will go through a few different ways that we can do thoracic rotation in the gym with Surge soon. So the third one is more of a general one and it's an awareness of form and posture and technique when in the gym. So I usually say to people, you can do three really good quality, really good form, calf raises or whatever you're doing at the gym, squats, Roman deadlifts. Um, but if you're doing 20 incorrectly, there's no point doing them at all. So form is a massive one to how you load up your joints and how your body responds to the movement. Alrighty, I'm going to show you the hardest version first because I like difficult things. Um, so we'll just demonstrate a normal sit up. So if you've been the knee surgeon, um, just do a normal sit up or a crunch. So people normally cheat by using momentum. So you can see the pull through the arms and a quick hurl up. So that's an extra activity from the hip flexors as well. And you may see people put their feet underneath uh, something at the gym to give them more leverage as they come up. So we're using a lot of things, but probably not really honing in on true abdominal strength. So um, I get people to lie on their backs, legs straight and hands up beside the ears. And the trick is to keep your hands beside your arms, beside your ears the whole time during each phase of the sit up. So the sit up is more called a roll up and you're rolling up through the spine. So if Serge lifts through the upper part of the spine first and is rolling vertebrae by vertebrae through each part of the spine until he's on the sit bones of the bottom. Yeah. So sometimes you see people sit up and they'll just be sitting back sort of slumped. We don't want that, that's not really all the way up, so up on the sit bones. And then we reverse that on the way down, so this lower part must hit the ground first. Really push down through the ribs to get that thoracic spine down and all the way down to the ground. So I normally see if people can do 10 of those. If this is too difficult, there are modifications that we can do. So we can have the arms out straight 90 degrees from the, from the shoulders or we can have bent knees, but we'll always try the hardest one first. So one of my second um, favorite exercises to incorporate into a program is thoracic rotation, more of a range of movement exercise. And I will assess it first and just have a look how well someone rotates in that thoracic spine and that gives me an idea of dynamically when they're doing their sport when they need to twist and turn and do all these kind of big movements do they have the facility there to be able to move uh, and if we lose that facility we start to get rigid through other areas as well so it's always a good overall body indication as to how well you can move dynamically so i normally test it in a high five position uh, that opens up through the mid thoracic spine where a lot of rotation happens and we can assess it uh, really well. So if Serge twists to one side, so I just see from the back how far his elbow comes and I can add over pressure 
and just see if I can get a bit further and then try the other side. And I just compare how far one side gets to the other and if there's any resistance on one side compared to the other as well. And you can rest your hands down. So that is thoracic rotation as an assessment. And if we're lacking in that, there's an exercise that we can show you to improve that rotation. So to help improve thoracic rotation, we do what's called thread the needle, where we're creating rotation on one side and then really pushing it through the next. And we normally do both sides. So if Serge goes into a tabletop position, hands underneath the shoulders and knees underneath the hips, Sit bones of the bottom are out like headlights of the car. Don't be polite and tuck the bottom under. We want them out so we've got that normal lumbar spine curve. He's gonna have the right hand behind the head, rotating up towards the roof to get some thoracic spine rotation to the right. And as he comes down, he's gonna drop the right hand and thread it through the arm and the knee on the left side. So this is thoracic rotation to the left. If you want more, like Serge is doing, you can drop the right shoulder to the ground and you can walk the left arm around. With this too, be careful not to twist the pelvis because then we're getting pelvic rotation and we really want the isolated thoracic rotation. So when he does it again, I'm just gonna stabilize the pelvis and make sure he doesn't move through here. Yep. And so that right side of the pelvis doesn't drop through when he rotates. And you do both sides. Normally I would recommend doing about five on each side, five and five, and then if you wanna have a rest and do five more, then that's fine as well. Another good way to do it is while you're down there is you hold and you breathe. So you think about opening up the ribs. So we've got the thoracic spine in a rotated position and now we're trying to open up the ribs, which requires quite a lot of movement. So my third favorite exercise it's not so much a particular exercise, but it's an all over awareness of technique and position while you're doing any exercise at the gym. So you could do three really good quality, whatever you're doing at the gym, calf raises, Roman deadlifts, squats. But if you do 20 bad ones with bad form, you're gonna be loading up your joints the wrong way and really you're not gonna be working the muscles in the way that you wanna be working them at all. So focusing on technique and position is really good. And I know a lot of dancers here at Dynamite where we are located, there's mirrors in the classroom, so you can always be watching and looking at your technique. In a gym situation, there's usually a mirror, um, which is really helpful. Don't think that you're just checking out your biceps, you actually do use those mirrors to check out form. Uh, so Serge is gonna demonstrate a Roman deadlift. So we'll do single leg Roman deadlift. So leaning forwards and touching the hand towards the ground. And as he comes up. So this exercise, you need a lot of awareness of where your body is in space. And if you need extra help, you can hold on to something for a little bit of awareness and then you can focus on how you're loading your body. So sometimes rather than do something that's so challenging that you forget what your body is doing, Something simple by touching something solid or having a little bit of help with your balance helps you load the joints a little bit more correctly. <laughs> so we've added weight so you can see the difference between unsupported and a supported Roman deadlift. So Serge is gonna go unsupported now. So you can see the pelvis drop and he's lost his balance a bit. I think he's exaggerating for demonstration purposes. But this is common what you see, the pelvis tips, the back leg crosses the midline. The shoulder drops. Uh, we didn't really get to see the pick up there. And the back does a lot of excessive work to come back up. So in comparison, when you have a little bit of support and you're not gripping, this is just finger balance. So we can focus on keeping that leg straight back from the hip, keeping the back straight as you go down and keeping the shoulder stabilized when you drop through with the weight. Thank you so much guys for joining us and watching this video. Um, let us know if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for uh, another video and hopefully you enjoyed it. Let us know, give us feedback and yeah, apply those tips in the gym.